What's the word, y'all? It is official. The Sacramento Kings have agreed on a sign and trade that will land DeMar DeRozan on a three-year deal. They sent Harrison Barnes to the Spurs, Chris Dorton, two second-round picks, and cash to the Bulls. If you know Jerry Reinsdorf, you know that man loves himself some cash, so this is a win for him. And the DeMar DeRozan deal is three years, $76 million to go to the Kings. He's already been introduced. Have y'all seen that clip? Let me pull it up. It's got to be the fastest, like no joke, the fastest a player has signed to a team and then been introduced to his new fan base, bro. And I'm not going to play the music. Just know um, they not like us as playing because you know Debo is a big part of that. But look at how excited this fan base is for him. I'm excited for him um, because the Sacramento Kings are one of the best fan bases in basketball and they got another guy. Now, this had been rumored for some time, right? I think it was Friday where Woj went on TV and he said basically the deal was done and they're still trying to figure out a couple different things that the Spurs are going to be the third team in. And as a Bulls fan, knowing that the Bulls only had one roster spot left and knowing that the Bulls love Kevin Herter, I thought that that was going to be the piece instead. It was Chris Dorty in two seconds and we'll talk about the Bulls side of things. But let's get to the team that got the got the, the crown jewel in this one. DeMar DeRozan is the king. So when that report came out on Friday, I immediately was like, ah... I don't necessarily love the fit of DeMar DeRozan in Sacramento, but since then I've thought about it a little bit more and, and no, it's not a perfect fit, but I understand it. it. Like, it's not a perfect fit, but I think it can work out. You got to think about it from the perspective of the Sacramento Kings, right? Two years ago, they were my favorite team in basketball when it comes to league pass, like the beam, everything was spe spectacular. They had a great regular season, got bounced in the playoffs with some injuries and Steph Curry going nuclear in game number seven. And that offseason was a very intriguing one for them, where a lot of people, expect, me included, expected them to go out and make some moves. They had some money because of Harrison Barnes was up for free agency and a couple other pieces. But they decided to steer on the side of continuity. And it probably was not the right deal because they went from a team that was secure in the playoffs the year before to a team that was a playing team and lost in the playing. So they went from one of the coolest stories of basketball to missing the playoffs completely. And now... You're coming off a year where you missed the playoffs and you question, how do we stay competitive? Like making the playoffs for the first time in what, 16 years is amazing, but our fan base is not just okay with making it one year then missing and missing and missing. And you look at the, the teams out in the West, well, the OKC Thunder should be better. Alex Caruso and Isaiah Hardenstein on the team. The Nuggets probably aren't better, but they still got the best, uh, the best duo in basketball and the best player in the league in Nikola Jokic. The Timberwolves should be the same or even better. The Clippers lost Paul George, so that could be a team that maybe drops a little bit. But the Mavericks on paper should be better in the regular season. Even the Suns, who were second eight for teams, so they couldn't make a lot of moves. They got like Monte Morris, which is a really good pickup. Ryan Dunn, really good pickup in the draft. The Lakers haven't done a lot so far, but like DeJounte Murray is now Pelican. The Rockets should be better. The Grizzlies should be back. So with all of these teams, we like 13 deep in the Western Conference alone. How do we not only stay competitive, but compete for a playoff spot? And that's just upgrading the talent. And DeMar DeRozan... Is really talented. I think at this point in his career, he's kind of become underrated in a sense because the Bulls have been so very bad and <laughs> like so very bad that we've kind of not forgotten who DeMar DeRozan is, but just, I guess, underrated him a little bit. And again, the fit is not perfect, but one thing about DeMar DeRozan is something I've realized, not just the, the last couple years in Chicago, but pretty much the entirety of his career, he has been a floor raiser, right? He has been a floor raiser, and that's kind of what you need for the Sacramento Kings right now. We know that he has not had the best playoff success and things like that. And when it comes to regular season, he's one of the most durable players in basketball. He's one of the clutchest players in basketball. You're teaming up with the guy that won clutch player a year a couple years ago, and DeMar DeRozan would have won the award if the award existed the year before. So you got two of the clutchest players in basketball so this team should be better. And you think about the price that it cost you. Two second-round picks, Chris Dorte, you just got to pay DeMar DeRozan, who, again, is one of the more durable players in basketball throughout the course of his career. It's, it, makes, it just makes sense. And again, going back to the fact that I didn't love the fit, I think part of that is because I personally had pigeonholed DeMar DeRozan after watching him in Chicago for three years or so. Um, and I think that with, with better coaching and, and a more fluid offense, that he can be more portable I know portable is one of those buzzwords in NBA Twitter and stuff but more portable than what he had been in Chicago because Chicago had negative spacing and because Chicago didn't have a lot of shot creation especially when when Zach Levine was out with his injury DeMar DeRozan had to put put on his big heavy backpack and do some things that you may not ask him to do in Sacramento. I watched DeMar DeRozan try to to build a two-man game with Nikola Vucevic and Vucevic not being to the caliber of player that maybe DeMar deserved in that. 
And Demonte Sabonis is one of the best two two way or uh, two game players in basketball. De'Aaron Fox can get downhill and make plays. So like again, not the perfect fit, but completely worth the risk. And I think it will be rewarding at the end of the day. I think their starting lineup is probably going to look like, um, of course, De'Aaron Fox. I know some people are penciling in back Kevin Herter or Malik Monk. I honestly do believe it's going to be Keon Ellis, who's playing summer league right now, which is so fun. Um, but they're going to need some defense on the scene. That's one of the downsides to DeMar DeRozan has not sat in a chair and defended in some years. Uh, and this was already a team that was not necessarily known for their defense, even though in the second half of the season, they were better. But let's say De'Aaron Fox, Keon Ellis, DeMar DeRozan, Keegan Murray, and DeMont Sabonis, that's a pretty solid start at five. And when Malik Monk being back is one of the best six men in basketball, maybe you can help Kevin Herter rejuvenate and get some of that magic that was from two years ago. I like this roster more today than I did yesterday. And sometimes that's all that really matters. Now, does a trade like this make them a contender? No, it doesn't. But I, again, I always say this. I think that is okay. Like every team shouldn't have to be, this is a championship roster or we should blow it up. That's that's not the way it should work. I, I've loved this 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 parody that the league has had. You get some good regular season success and some injury luck, then boom, you could be in the second round. You could be in the conference final. So I am not one of them guys. It's like, I look at the star lineup and say, it's cool, but is it good enough to win? It's not really that important right now. I do believe that they should still do some other moves because right now when it comes to wings on a roster, it's basically DeMar DeRozan, it's Jalen McDaniels, it's Keegan Murray who can play a little bit of three and four, and that's it. So I don't know what the next move is, but I'm assuming that they get one more when it comes to wings. And I know people are speculating that they still have some draft capital. I don't know if you want to trade more draft capital, but they still have some draft capital when there are some wings that could potentially be on the market. Um, and you can accumulate some of the salaries, whether it be Kevin Herter and so on and so forth. Yeah, you still have Kevin Herter 16 and Trey Lyles is eight. So you can get up to 20 plus million dollars in, in cap, um, even with DeMar DeRozan's number on the books. And again, I don't know exactly who that is, but like Kuzma kind of fits into that mode. And I'm not saying they should go with Kuzma, but just like another wing slash three, four will go a very long way because they don't have a lot of those. And I just saw that in Chicago. And it's one of the reasons why DeMar DeRozan played so many minutes last year, especially with all the injuries. There was not much wing depth behind DeMar DeRozan. And again, he's a durable guy and he, he will play 40 minutes if you ask him to. But at the age of 34, you don't really want that man playing that much time. So go get another wing and the roster will probably look a little bit more complete. So I, I like it. I like it for the Spurs to come in and just be that third team, get another veteran. And, and Black Falcon Harrison Barnes has been a, a vet's vet. You know, him and Chris Paul coming into that team are going to teach a lot to these young players. And I, I love it for them. I mean, they get some second round picks involved. Um, and then they get a guy who I'm pretty sure on the last year of his deal. So it's not like you you got a lot to, to attach yourself to. And Harrison Barnes is a NBA champion. And he's been through a lot of ups and downs his career from being a champion to being traded uh, in the middle of a basketball game. He's got a lot of experiences, y'all. So he'll go in and teach Kale and teach Devin Vassell, teach all of these young wings what it's like to be a pro. Um, so the Spurs roster shaping up a little bit more because I think that Harrison Barnes is one of those players that could definitely get lost on the court where you're like, oh, I didn't even realize he played 32 minutes tonight. But he also can hit a couple corner threes and do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So he's going to actually play for them next season. I think some people are like, is he going to get bought out? I don't believe so. I think they're going to bring him in and he's going to play real hoops. Um, and lastly, before we get out of here, let's talk about the Bulls side of things. I mean, I have geared myself up to not get anything in return. That's just the reality of it. Again, the Bulls have been poor when it comes to their asset management. Probably should have traded DeMar DeRozan at the deadline. But once he hit free agency, I knew that we weren't going to get anything for him. The fact that we got two seconds, I'm kind of excited about because we haven't been able to turn anybody into any future picks. Um, I'm, I'm excited because, again, we, we've kind of understood this because of the giddy trade and because of all of this stuff that the Bulls are gearing towards a rebuild. And that's all I really asked for the last year and a half is for them to look at what they have and say, hey, if we're not good enough to make it out of the play in every season, what are we really doing here? And they made the decision. DeMar DeRozan is gone. And it kind of, it does suck because DeMar DeRozan, one of those pros pro, every interaction I've had with him has been so positive. Even him taking the time out in summer league when we was just passing by, he saw I had the Chicago Bulls just done shorts on. He's like, yo, what up DeMar? And he saw the alpha. He's like, what up boys? And he kind of chatted with us for a couple seconds. Didn't need to do that. He was not obligated to be cool. You know what I'm saying? And also an opportunity to interview him when I did that Chicago Bulls merch drop. And again, just a very, very cool dude. The city of Chicago will always love him. The 2021-2022 season is one I'll remember as one of the best individual Bulls seasons I got to experience with my own eyes. It's like, honestly, it's MVP Derrick Rose, 
It's a uh, third or, or fourth MVP voting, Joe Kim Noah. Then after that, maybe one of the Jimmy Butler, which one of the Jimmy Butler seasons. And then it's like DeMar DeRozan 21-22. He hit back to back. He had a game winner on December 31st and a game winner on, on January 1st. Like, how is that even pop? He was as clutch as can be. Um, and we had, I'm, I got some good members of DeMar DeRozan in the Bulls jersey, bro. He's one of the few people on the court that felt like he wanted to win basketball games. So, um, I'm not mad at the return. Chris Duarte hasn't been able to hit a shot in two seasons, so I'm not expecting him to rejuvenate his career. If he does, he does. Cool. Uh, but the, the writing was on the wall that DeMar was gone. Um, and I'm just happy that we've picked a direction for the front office. Uh, the next thing is trying to find a team for Zach Levine, and it might not happen, unfortunately. Um, and also try to find a team for Vucevic. Also might not happen. But regardless, I'm excited about the future of the Bulls, even though we're going to win 12 games. But Cooper Flag is going to look good in that black red and white man um so one of those deals that like i'm kind of i understand it from every single side and i think that's all that matters i'm gonna start doing this by the way now uh these are videos that i've published on different channels this one is a golf video yes i have a golf channel if you didn't know we were close to 20 000 subscribers and this one i upload like four to five times a week of just doing random quizzes and stuff so go subscribe to those channels if you want to if you want